Today we're exploring how we can brew the best version of April coffee using the Kono Gripper. Welcome back to another episode of Coffee with April. This time we're continuing exploring what for us is new brew methods uh, and we're trying to see how can we brew the tastiest version of April coffee using these methods. Now this specific method was more or less brought to us by one of our April athletes, David from Australia. He's been having some really good success competing with this brewer and it's also what he's brewing coffee with on a day-to-day -day basis. So this is a Kono brewer which is made in Japan by the company that apparently originally created the Siphon brewer as well. That's a long story and a separate story but worth looking into. Now, there's a few interesting features with this brewer. Uh, I believe it comes in two different sizes as well. Uh, keep that in mind for this video. Um, as you can see, it's quite similar to, for example, a V60 in the sense that it's a cone brewer, but it's a cone brewer without basically any ridges on the inside, uh, which puts it more or less similar to what Chemex is to some degree. Not the same, but similar, right? Uh, which is kind of interesting and we've been changing our recipe accordingly as well. Another thing to consider is the fact that they actually have several different paper options for this brewer and we choose to go with, uh, for the lack of a better name on it, the yellow version. And the yellow version is what we believe to be the thickest version of the paper filter, actually generating the slowest flow rate. More about that later. Now we're going to start the brew. So. We're going to start by dosing 14 grams of really coarsely ground coffee. Like we're used to grind very coarse here. Uh, but since we have a paper that actually has a slower flow rate, we're going to make this even coarser. So we are up above 45 clicks on Incomandante. Some brews we tested all the way up to 50, which is obviously very, very coarse. Now, uh, we're also kind of following the guideline in terms of temperature here. So this brewer or the recommendation of this brewer is actually to brew with a slightly lower temperature than what we perhaps are used to. So we're using 88 degrees Celsius water here, right? Which again, it's actually helping us the fact that we have a slightly thicker filter because a slightly thicker filter increases the contact time, allows us to grind coarser, allows us to have a lower water temperature, but still generate the strength that we want. And for your reference, the strength that we're looking for for this specific brew is about 1.25 TDS which is a TDS that I quite commonly use myself when I'm competing, for example, and also a TDS where we serve most of our coffees here in the April store as well. Now, as you guys know, we're a fan of simple pouring. What we're doing here is four identical pours using a 50 gram circle pour. So we started with one pour, we let that set for 30 seconds, we did the other pour, and at one minute and 10 seconds, we're gonna continue to do our third pour. We're also brewing continuously in a circle here as well. One of the reasons for that is because we find that the, we just get a lot more uniform results here. We're not sure, we haven't used the brewer enough to say exactly why a center pour doesn't seem to be working as well as on the other brewers. Um, probably it's connected to some degree with the ridges on the side of the filter uh, or the lack of it. So it actually generates a slightly different flow rate than what we're used to here at April. But we should say that continuously we get really sweet, vibrant results with this brewer. Now at 150, we're gonna do our final pour and again that's going to go up to 200 and keep in mind at this point the slurry temperature the actual brewing temperature is actually going to be closer down to 80 degrees now because of the water that we're pouring on since so at 88 it will always be much lower temperature in the actual slurry where we're brewing the coffee than the temperature that is in the kettle and this makes a big difference when it comes to the brew now, what we're looking for here is a brew time of about three minutes and 20 seconds. By that time, all of the water is gonna go through all of the coffee. 
The coffee that we're using or we chose to experiment with is our red honey processed geisha varietal from the Vulcan Azul farm in Costa Rica. This coffee is really interesting and very suitable for this brew method as well as it is a Costa Rican coffee. We find that to be having quite a bit more inherent body than other coffees. Let's say for example, washed Ethiopian coffee. So you have a bit more structure here by default. And this is allowing us to basically brew using a slightly coarser grind size, a slightly lower temperature. You're still gonna have body, you're still gonna have structure within this coffee. And both of those variables we believe is really important. Again, then together factoring in the flavor notes. Now we're at 320 and we're lifting off the filter. So what we get here is because of the ratio being 14 to 200, which is quite a low ratio, uh, we get a really intense coffee. Uh, but because of the grind size being so coarse and because of the brewing temperature, we can still make sure that the TDS is actually on the lower side of things. So we get flavor quality and flavor transparency as well. Um, long story short, we're actually super happy with this little brewer. It's been really interesting to work with and we're looking forward to continue exploring it. Now, if you wanna share your experience with it, if you used it before, if you have any comments on this video, as always, please share below. Thank you all for watching.